Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, and I am so happy to be back for another episode of Wellness Wednesday Inspiration with Dr. Linda Marcus. And we have a guest today. We're going to be talking all about gut health. But before we get started, Dr. Linda, how are you doing today? Hi, happy Wednesday, everybody. I am doing amazing Wednesday, hump day Wednesday, and um, excited about our, our guests that we have on. Of course, I love the gut, and there's so many connections with that. So excited to have her on. And I know a lot's been going on with you and your world and, and vice versa. So um, you were out where? You were out in Sedona. Is that the first time you were out in Sedona? I've been back um, actually two weekends in a row. I loved it so much that mm -hmm. I, I drove back last weekend again. And uh, it's only a two and a half hour drive for me. Yes. I am. So it's it's totally worth it. It's another oh. world out there. What yeah, an amazing absolutely. experience every time I go. Was that the first time two weekends ago that you had been out to Sedona? No, I made it to Sedona once before, uh, about mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when I first came to Arizona ever. Okay. And uh, we went to a couple of national parks and just driving around and I fell in love with the place. Yeah. And then two weeks ago, I went by myself and I just had a day with, you know, with myself and everything and I loved it. Came back home, showed everybody the pictures and then everybody was like, I wanna go. So I took the whole family <laughs> last weekend and we had a blast. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I know you like oh, to go out there, too, right? You can get lost. Just in your oh, I love going there. It was just you can go there on your own and just kind of have your own little retreat and get centered and get connected back with your true self. And it's awesome to bring your family because it gives you all a, an opportunity to connect more deep, just as a family, but even with friends and on a spiritual level. So that's cool. And of course, you know with with health, it's always about the mind, body, and spirit. So you get to you get all three there because you're out hiking, and it's just awesome. So I'm glad you took your family because those little guys are gonna definitely appreciate it. You know, and your hubby too, right? Did your hubby go mm -hmm. with you? And everybody your went. Mama I took too? My mom. Yeah, I went. I took my mom. She awesome. loved it. She was amazed mm -hmm. by like everybody, everything. She was just yeah. looking right to side and didn't want to miss anything. Yeah, makes you just appreciate life and just like, man, we, we're really missing out just staying in, in the house, like on the computer, or on social media. It's like we need to get out and play. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm excited about the guests that we have coming on and uh, in a little, little bit um, off before we came on. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and. Um, introduce Julie and I know y'all were connecting you both are very much of the same um, just in alignment with how you how you treat patients and how you look at things so I can't wait for her to share her story and everything but Julie is a nurse get into that and she does a lot of GI map testing as that's something I love and totally believe in food sensitivity testing she's also a, a, a graduate professor at Emory, Emory um, University she's been a nurse practitioner almost 20 years and she's got little ones that she um, kind of has this flexibility now with doing telemedicine which I think has been a gift from COVID that we we can actually reach more people around the around the world, really. So that's exciting. I'm excited to hear her story about that. And she's out um, lecturing as well. I think that's what good, good practitioners do. They go out and share their message, educate people, and enlighten them. And so she's she does that quite a bit. And she also has a podcast. I think she's teaming up with her sister on this podcast as well. So it's called the Natural Shift. And if you haven't heard of it, I got to listen to some some episodes a lot of bomb a lot of gems and truth bombs in there and a lot of uh, health a lot of good nuggets there so um <clears throat> i think we're losing dr linda on and off the connection it's you're pretty rare Julie? All right. Dr. Linda, your connection, it's a little bit spotty. We kind of lost you at the end over there, but we're going to bring Julie. Julie, how are you doing today? 
Hi, I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me on. This is like my favorite thing to talk about. Yay! We're so excited to have you too. We love to talk about all things wellness, but we have a special love with gut health because we understand how important it is for overall wellness. So super excited to have you in today and talking about gut health and the importance for health and wellness, basically. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm, dive right in. Ask me anything that you want to. I'm ready. I'm excited. Well, Julie, let's start with, tell us a little bit, Dr. Linda kind of just introduced you with the audience. The connection was a little bit spotty, but tell us a little bit about how you came to these being an expert on gut wellness. Yes. Sure. So I was sharing before before we went live that um, I've been a nurse practitioner in traditional medicine for almost 20 years. And the majority of my career there has been in cardiovascular health, um, cardiovascular medicine. And um, while I love that and there's you know, there's a huge place for traditional medicine, I never want to be misunderstood on that. Um, I really started moving more into um, natural and holistic health about seven years ago. And it was um, honestly, it started out of necessity for myself. You know, I just started looking into different things that I wanted to incorporate with my family, natural tools, natural medicine. And to be honest with you, I have had or had gut issues for almost my whole life. So that's probably one of the reasons that I'm super passionate about this topic. Um, I went for years and years until I was probably 40 years old um, with gut issues. And it wasn't until I discovered, you know, taking more of this of a natural holistic approach that I actually healed my gut. And so I can really relate to the clients that I work with now and, and their struggle. And I just, my heart goes out to them, but that is another reason that I'm so passionate about helping them understand that you don't have to live that way, that there, there is hope for healing your gut. You don't just have to kind of accept this is the way I am. Cause I hear that a lot, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so that's how I kind of got into to doing more of the holistic and, and gut health. You know what? It's good when you can relate to patients on a personal level as well as a professional level. And I think in that sense, you can find that special connection where they are able to say, well, you went through that. And what was your experience, not just as a provider, but your personal experience. And that makes and I have found that in my practice as well, that helps connect with patients on a more like on a deeper level. Yes, absolutely. 100 percent. And two, you know, when you're asking a patient to undergo testing or to do something to, to eat a certain way or, you know, if you've been through that and you know it and you've experienced it, it, it you know, you just you create a bond with them, I think. So I love that. That's something that I really enjoy about what I do. I agree. I agree. So what does the term gut health mean to you or mean in general? And why should we even care about it? Yeah, for sure. This is, I think gut health is a, a word that's kind of thrown around a lot, right? We see it everywhere now. You know, everybody's like, you know, do you have good gut health? What What is poor gut health? So the term gut health simply refers to the balance of microorganisms in our gut. Okay. Just kind of think of it like that. And, and why that is really important, why we should care about that, because somebody might hear that and think, Okay, so what, you know, mm -hmm. the reason that we should care about that is when you have a healthy balance, it gives you a strong immune system, you can maintain healthy weight, you can have proper digestion, it improves your mood, you can sleep well, and also gut health, health a healthy gut has been shown to prevent some cancers and autoimmune diseases. So that right there is, is a, you know, big or big, huge reasons that we should care about our gut. So the microbiome, that's another word that I just want to kind of um, clarify because sometimes that's thrown around and people don't really know what that means. So the microbiome is just a collection of these trillions and trillions of bacteria, viruses that we have um, in our gut. And so that's what that means if you, if you hear that. And what we are finding is the gut microbiome is so much more complex than we ever thought, you know, the more and more um, we research and, and find things out. And when it is out of balance and there's more 
bad bacteria or viruses or parasites, then good. That's when those symptoms start to arise, when we start to really see things in our body. And it's like our body going, hey, something's wrong. Something's off. Pay attention here. So that's kind of what, in a nutshell, what gut health is and why we should care about it. Sorry, y'all. I kind of checked out here for a minute, but um, I know that's a really important uh topic this the gut the gut microbiome because a lot of people don't understand what it is so you're kind of reiterating and that's just to simplify that it's just a community of bacteria that's in the gi tract and describing the gi tract where you know like where it starts with it you know where it ends because a lot of people kind of think that the gi tract is oh it's just the large intestine so can you kind of share a little bit about that about the importance of that from um, start to end yeah. So, I mean, it starts in the mouth with, you know, when we put food in our mouth and we start chewing and actually when we smell foods and we start to salivate, that actually starts, you know, the process. It. Yeah, because we make digestive enzymes and um, those mm -hmm. are really important. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more, you know, about those, but it literally, you know, goes all the way through, you know, mouth down esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and then out through the rectum. I mean, that's what, you know, that's kind of the process of how whatever we put in our mouth, where it goes, right? <laughs> now, different things happen along the way, right? Um, and and I think that that is an important point because I know we're going to talk about some, maybe some signs of poor gut health. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, when people think gut health, a lot of times they think, well, I don't really have a lot of digestive issues, so my gut's probably fine. And we know that that is not a lot of times the case, right? Because there are all these extra manifestations of poor gut health that aren't just digestive related, right? So, so let's see, dive in. Go ahead. So you see that like, you know, like you were saying a lot of your patients, because there's sometimes when you go see the doctor and, or as, as you ladies, as the nurse practitioners, mm -hmm. the patients come in and see you. And let's just say, like, I know Fernanda and I, we've talked about that, like, even depression could be related to gut health, if skin, you know, and so when you ask somebody, and it's so obvious, you could see like bloating, and you see them like they're swollen, or they have bags under their eyes, so to speak. And you ask them about their GI tract, it's like, oh, how's your digestion? And or in the intake forms, oh, it's a 10. It's great. But then yet they have you know, I want you to share some of the more symptoms, common symptoms, but then even not so common symptoms, it kind of gives you a little um, direction to, hey, you know what, I think we really need to look into your your gut. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, did you want to say something? Fernanda? I was gonna say, let's dive into the signs and symptoms yeah. that kind of correspond to poor gut health. So what are those symptoms? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So first, let's just mention the obvious. If you have bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, indigestion, mm -hmm. stomach pain, if you have those on a regular basis, that is not normal. That means that something is off in your gut. And here's just to, to your point, Dr. Linda, I think that this is this is what I find a lot. People will say, oh, my gut health is great. And then mm -hmm. you find out, well, they only have a bowel movement once a week. And, and here's the thing they think that's normal. They've rationalized that as, yeah. oh, this is just normal, you know? And so I think a lot of this is about education and helping people mm -hmm. understand that that's a way that, a huge way that our body detoxes. And so it is very important to have a bowel movement every day, you know? So um, if you have any of those symptoms on a regular basis, then something is off. Let's just leave it as basic as, as that right now. Something is off in your gut. But some other things that, that you will see with poor gut health, are multiple food intolerances. That's a really common mm -hmm. one. And I know maybe we'll talk about some testing um, in a little bit. That's one. You mentioned skin issues. So things like um, acne, eczema. I mean, that's that's a huge, our skin, our skin is obviously our largest organ, but our body detoxes and tries to get rid of these toxins through our skin, right? So that's hugely um, related to, to gut health. Uh, we mentioned, I mentioned earlier um, about immunity and having a, a low immune system. So right now, you know, with everything going on, it's always important to have a strong immune system, but especially right now, that's something that I think people, 
you know, are more aware of and they're maybe even more concerned with. They want to make sure that they can fight off whatever, you know, they're coming in contact with, whether it's COVID or something else. But um, we know 70% of our immunity lives in our gut. So, you know, the balance of that good and bad bacteria um, in our gut, when it's, when it's unbalanced, then our immune system is going to kind of go into overdrive and create a state of inflammation. Uh, and, and that's one of the things I know you mentioned GI map testing. Um, I'm not sure if Dr. Linda cut out. Yeah, I think she cut out, but she mentioned GI map testing, um, which I think we'll maybe talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the levels um, that we can come kind of test on the GI map is called a secretory IgA. And that is a marker of immunity of the immune system in your gut. And so, you know, it, it, when that is low, it's kind of like your immune system it has is wiped out and has kind of been in overdrive. And so it's that's important, you know, to boost up because it affects our, our whole body, right? Um, so that's one. Um, another one that is really common is um, emotional health. So things like anxiety, depression, panic attacks, you know, studies are showing that there are very positive effects on our emotional wellness when we have good gut health. And we know that certain bacteria are linked to mental health issues, to emotional issues. And there's a huge gut brain connection, right? We've heard that before, you know, the gut brain connection. Um, so that's another one, you know, if you have um, issues. Um, a lot of times what I hear is um, from women is um, that they have a lot of mood swings, you know, that they don't know why, they can't explain it. They're just very, quote, moody. Um, so that's, that's another one. Um, hormone imbalances. This is a big one, especially, you know, I primarily work with women, mm -hmm. but um, uh, especially, uh, you know, thinking about the fact that the gut microbiome plays a huge role in regulation of estrogen levels. And so that, you know, influences the risk of us developing things that are estrogen related diseases like endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, even breast cancer. I mean, those, you know, having a healthy gut helps prevent those issues. So that's huge. Um, the other thing that uh, I actually did not know this until um, I had my first GI map test um, and I actually had this issue. Um, is how big of a role fat digestion plays in our hormones and in absorption mm -hmm. and manufacturing of proper hormones. I had, you know, all of these hormonal symptoms too. And when I had my first GI map test, my steatocrit level, which is basically a measure of how well you're digesting fat, it was super high. So I was, you know, not digesting fat and therefore, you know, manufacturing hormones and utilizing my hormones properly. Um, so that was huge for me to, you know, I could see the link there. Oh, okay. This is why I'm having these other symptoms too. Um, so that was, that's um, something that maybe people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, poor gut health mm -hmm. also, um, sorry, did you say something? Did you say something, Dr. Linda? No, no, I'm just listening. I'm, I just love, love everything you're sharing. <laughs> okay, great. I just didn't want to feel free to interject at any point. Um, but uh, as of what I was going to say is um, serotonin. That's another comment on because, you know, um, serotonin is often referred to as like the happy hormone. We think of it as, you know, it affects our mood and, and our well-being and um, it really impacts our, our entire body. So it not only regulates mood, it regulates appetite and 90% mm -hmm. of serotonin is in your gut. So, you know, sometimes we think it's only made in the brain, but 90% of it mm -hmm. is actually made in yeah. the gut. Um, so you can see why often gut issues lead to things like anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, weight management. That's another really big one, um, you know, that I that I hear and see uh, from people. Um, and we know that having a healthy weight, our gut plays into that as well, because studies show that dysbiosis, which 
That's another term that I want to clarify. So dysbiosis is basically just an imbalance of good and bad bacteria. You have more bad bacteria yeah. than good bacteria. So just if you hear that word, that's all that that means. Um, but that has been shown to play a role in weight gain. So these bacteria, these pathogenic bacteria, they basically produce these harmful like metabolites and byproducts that cause inflammation in the body. Well, when we have all of this, even if it's low grade inflammation, that leads to our body storing more fat. It leads to insulin resistance. And so therefore we gain weight. Now, I was recently um, reading a study that um, was talking about the fact that people who were overweight had lower uh, gut diversity, bacterial diversity, and they also mm -hmm. had higher levels of C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker in the blood. So that kind of is more support and, you know, lends more support to that, to what we see. I think I read that, um, that study as well. Yeah. So it's so mm -hmm. interesting. I just, I just love mm -hmm. when all this new information comes out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, I would say, um, one that, that often is probably overlooked and people don't know as much about the connection is with the heart. There is, is a huge connection. So a lack of gut diversity has been associated with um, diabetes, with obesity, which are both risk factors for heart disease, of course. Um, and the gut microbiome can, can increase the tendency of plaque in the arteries. So if somebody mm -hmm. has some uh, plaque built up in their arteries, it can increase the tendency that that, that plaque will rupture and cause a heart attack. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? That is, and those are things that people don't associate with gut health at all, at all. Absolutely. I, I know you're absolutely right. Um, and, and we've also through research um, been able to see or show that um, there are certain microbes, uh, you know, different organisms, certain organisms that are tied to a lower risk of developing coronary artery disease. So what's interesting is not only can the pathogenic bacteria cause problems, you know, with the heart, but it can also be protective. If you have the right diversity of microbes in your gut, it can also be protective. So that's pretty cool, um, I think. Um, and then I want you to think of the gut microbiome as kind of like an endocrine organ, meaning that it generates, these bacteria generate these metabolites. So they kind of like put off, think of it like put off these metabolites that affect our physiology in our body. And so I want to give you an example of this. So there's, there's a metabolite um, that comes from uh, certain pathogenic bacteria in the gut mm -hmm. called um, trimethylene N oxide. It's abbreviated TMAO. So the reason I bring this up since we're talking about the heart is it is associated, there's a direct link with that metabolite and cardiovascular disease and the development of an arrhythmia called atrial fibrillation, which is, wow. you know, most people have heard that term if they don't really even know what it means. So it's just an irregular heartbeat. Um, but there is a link there between that metabolite that's produced from these bad bacteria in the gut to the development of atrial fibrillation and heart disease. So that's pretty interesting, right? So all, all of those are kind of the most common um, uh, manifestations of poor gut health that aren't just digestive. Wow, that's amazing. And it's, it's mind blowing, honestly, to know that it can affect everything from the skin to the heart to everything in between. Basically, it's affected by our gut and how healthy our gut is, yeah. correct? Absolutely. So what, what are those things that cause someone to develop an unhealthy gut? Yes, um, that's very important because these are the things that you want to begin modifying and try to avoid, right? So mm -hmm. the first one I would say is food, of course. I mean, we have to think about what mm -hmm. we're putting into our body. So things like processed foods, uh, sugar is a big one. Um, we know that those those um, chemicals and processed foods and sugar alter the microbiome. And a lot of the bad bacteria um, in our gut actually um, feed off of sugar, right? And so it, it, it allows them to become even more and more overgrown the more we're eating these processed foods um, and sugar. And you probably are familiar with the saying, but just is something to keep in the back of your mind. Every time you eat, you're either feeding disease or fighting it, right? So based on what you're putting into your body, 
So really, really important to kind of think about that um, and just start making changes slowly. It's not something that happens overnight, but just kind of upgrading the foods that you're eating and cutting out some of the processed stuff is the way to sustainability, right? Um, stress, that's another one, um, huge one. one. Gosh, that I think I'm, I'm thankful that it's talked about more now um, than it used to be. Um, but I still think we need to bring more and more awareness to the effects that stress has on our overall health. But a lot of that is, is in part due to what it's doing um, to our gut. Stress can actually weaken the intestinal barrier and allow gut bacteria to enter the body. So basically leaky gut. It's very common to cause leaky gut. Um, and then the lastly, I would say probably one of the common things that contributes to poor gut health are medications. So, you know, some over-the-counter medications, prescription medications, especially antibiotics, we know that those kind of wipe out the good uh -huh. bacteria um, in the gut. So anytime you can choose a natural option and avoid that, then that's, that's the way to go. Wonderful. Wonderful. Dr. Linda, are you back with us? I think her connection still kind of just body. So Julie, let's move on to now we know what the symptoms are. We know what causes or what contributes to getting an unhealthy gut. Mm -hmm. So I know there has been a, a hype lately about like prebiotics and probiotics and all these things that we can do. And patients are like trying to figure out different things. At least, you know, a lot of the patients that I talk to, they're trying to become a little bit more health conscious in regards to things that they can do to improve their health. And like you said, maybe stress is being a little bit more talked about, just like probiotics are. Mm -hmm. That was not the, <laughs> the literally the situation a few years ago when I started in practice, nobody knew about probiotics and, you know, it was like a foreign thing to, for everybody. So all of these things are becoming more common, but what are really the things that we should be doing to improve our health? Yes. Um, great question. So, Certainly, you know, cleaning up your diet a little bit, thinking about more whole foods. Now, I, I do want to talk about foods in terms, especially in terms of prebiotics and probiotics, because the thing is, you know, we can and I, I firmly believe in taking high quality supplements like probiotics, but the more you can get from food. That is, that's the way to go. So if you can get these things from your food, not that you're always going to be get, going to be able to get everything from your food. I'm not saying that, but the more that you can get from your food, it's in its natural state. Like that, that's ideal, right? So, so let's think about a, a probiotic. Well, first of all, um, let's talk about the supplement first. So if you, I believe that everybody should be taking a probiotic. I do believe that it, it's great for not only your gut health, it boosts your immunity and that's, you know, it's your overall health. That's what we, what we need is, is a stronger immune system and better overall health. So when you're looking at a probiotic and looking for a probiotic, it's important to get one that has prebiotic fiber with it because what, what the prebiotics and prebiotic fiber does is it is food for the probiotics. So if you want to kind of like maximize the benefit of the probiotics, then you take prebiotics with it. And you can find there's plenty of great high quality brands that, that they're incorporated together in one pill. Now let's talk about like some foods that have pre and probiotics in them. So prebiotic fiber, some of the most common foods with prebiotic fiber are bananas, onions, garlic, asparagus. Those are, those are very high in prebiotic fiber. Now probiotics, um, you know, we think of things like fermented food. So things like kimchi, kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut. Um, and I know a lot of people like think about this and they're like, Ugh, you know, I used to think the same thing until I started in court. You know, I tried it. So don't knock it till you try it. You know, so I tried it and I absolutely like I eat sauerkraut almost every day. I love it. So, you know, try, try some of these things out. Also, apple cider vinegar, you know, you have to get it with the mother. But apple cider vinegar is another great one. Yogurt, I just want to say, you know, yogurt does have, you know, some probiotics in it, but you really have to be careful with, you know, I think yogurt is one of those things that a lot of people automatically think, oh, this is healthy, but it depends. Yeah. You know, most of the time. 
I mean, most of the most of them out there are not that healthy for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. With sugar, preservatives, chemicals. Mm-hmm. Dairy doesn't agree with everyone, and it's often. I mean, that's one of the top things that I have people eliminate right away to see if it will help with their symptoms, especially mm-hmm. like bloating and gas and things like that. Uh, but th- there are some really great plant-based yogurts out there, um, you know, that you could try. So um, those are those are things that are great to try in terms of food. Now, if you've never tried um, an elimination diet, that might be very beneficial too. If you have a lot of digestive sim- you know symptoms, especially. Um, and the other thing that I would say is is really important. Um, supplement wise that I like to have people try that really helps everyone is digestive enzymes. Um, you know, we, we do make digestive enzymes in our body. Um, some foods have digestive enzymes in them, but it's primarily raw foods and most of us are not eating a raw diet. So um, digestive enzymes are something that you can see almost immediate results from because all it's doing is these enzymes are helping your, your body break down the food. And not only that, absorb the nutrients because you know you can be eating the healthiest diet ever but if your gut is in poor health you're not absorbing the nutrients not, exactly it's not being digested yeah exactly mm-hmm. and then you know because that that was actually my story i would i mean i've eaten clean and healthy for i don't know how many years 10 or more mm-hmm. years and you know i would think why am i eating these healthy foods and i still feel horrible still have headaches bloating constipation like all the things and it was because my gut was totally out of balance i mean it was it was terrible the first test that i had i couldn't believe it um and so so that's a big clue you know especially if you're eating things um and you have a lot of food intolerances then that's a clue that things are really you know not okay. healthy. Mm-hmm. yeah so really quick, let's talk about let's talk about testing. Mm-hmm. So what kind of testing and why is it important and what the results would tell us basically from the most common testing that you would recommend for someone when we're talking about gut health? OK, sure. So first and foremost, um, the, the number one test would be a GI map test. And so this is a test that looks at the DNA of the organisms that it tests for. So it's very detailed. It uses this um, specific technology called PCR technology, um, and it's it's the best test available. So it's a stool test. You can do it right at home. You send it in, the lab analyzes it, and then sends it to your provider. But let me tell you what all it tests for so that you can kind of get a good idea of, of what results you get. So it tests for the good bacteria, so the healthy bacteria. We want to know that we have healthy levels of those. Um, It tests for um, commensal bacteria, which these are basically, they're not friendly or unfriendly. Um, They're fine when they're present in small amounts. We just don't want them to get overgrown because then they become problematic. It tests for pathogenic bacteria, um, for bacteria that are associated with certain autoimmune disorders. Um, It tests for parasites, for worms, for viruses, um, for yeast. Uh, It also looks at the immune markers. Like I mentioned, the secretory IgA, it tells us what your immunity looks like. We can tell if you're digesting and absorbing fat, if your liver's detoxing properly, um, if you are sensitive to gluten. So it gives you tons of information. And that is the number one test um, that, that I recommend and that I um, do on my clients. Now, the other thing that, um, that I often do as well, and this is up to the individual, but I get a lot of questions around it is food sensitivity testing. So, um, IgG food sensitivity testing, um, is, is the best in my opinion. And it's, I never advise people to do that without the GI map, because if you have multiple food sensitivities, it's a gut issue. You have to heal the gut and we have to know what's going on in the gut to actually fix the underlying problem. So it's like getting to the root of the problem. Mm-hmm. We often do the food sensitivity and GI map together because yeah. what that allows us to do is go ahead and kind of customize your diet to eliminate some of those things that are really causing you symptoms so that we can get you feeling better quicker. So that those um, those are, are two of the, the, the biggest tests that I see that are most helpful with, with gut health. Julie, let me ask you, if someone is um, allergic to something in particular, a food um, sensitivity, and then they heal their gut, is it likely that they can go back and resume 
eating whatever they were allergic to, or is that something that it doesn't necessarily happen? Yes. So that is a great question and one that I that I get a lot as well. So so there and I want to explain this just quickly because um, I think it's important for people to understand. So there are food allergies. That's more of like an immediate reaction. So think of somebody who eats peanut butter and they have an anaphylactic reaction. Then there's food sensitivities. These can be delayed up to three days. So you may eat some pineapple and you may not really have symptoms or notice a lot for three days. It could be that long. And then there's food intolerances. Now, you're not necessarily making antibodies to these foods, but you just know when you eat something, it's kind of like dairy. You know, if somebody has a dairy intolerance, when you eat it, uh, you, it's not digested it well. Mm -hmm. Yep, you don't feel well. Okay. But here's the great news. Now, when we, when we, you know, correct the dysbiosis, get rid of any bad bacteria, yeast, whatever's going on in the gut, then it's very common that you are able to go back and eat those foods. I mean, almost, I won't say all of them every single time, but a good majority of them, you're able to reintroduce. And, and I found that in myself. There were so many things that I couldn't eat that I can now eat, you know, because I healed my gut. So yes, that's a great question. Wonderful. And I think we're coming to the end of uh, the show. So before we go, could you please share with us the three major things, three major takeaways that we can, um, you know, have for the audience in regards to gut health and things that we can start implementing basically today to start improving our gut health? Mm -hmm. So first, I would say, pay attention to how you're feeling. And I know that sounds maybe crazy, but a lot of us, we're busy, we're busy moms, wives, we work. You put yourself on the back burner and you're taking care of everybody else. So pay attention to you, even if you have to keep a little journal to, you know, to see how you feel, you know, how your how your gut's doing or what other, other symptoms you might be having. Pay attention and know that any of those things that I mentioned, you know, anything with the digestion, with the skin, you know, with the mood, all of that, you don't have to accept that as, oh, this is just the way I am, or I guess I just have to live with this. It's because you haven't gotten to the root cause of the problem yet. So I would just say, if that's you, then reach out to somebody that you trust, that you know can help you. So get tested. That, that's the number one thing. Stop guessing and get tested so that you can actually get on the path of healing once and for all, because that's what I see so many times times people come and they've been on this ham, you know, on this like hamster wheel for years and years and years and years and years. And then they just finally get fed up. But you don't have to get to that point. You know, go ahead, pay attention to your symptoms, reach out to somebody and get tested. And that's basically going to the root of the problem, like you were saying. If we're not treating the root of the problem, we're only controlling the symptoms, but they're never going to go away unless we actually go to what's causing the symptoms and treat that from the root, basically. Exactly. We're just putting Band-Aids on the problem. And, exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. One more question that the audience had before we let you go. Um, someone said, food elimination diet versus food sensitivity test, would you start someone on the diet first or test? Okay. That's an awesome question. So if I were going to do a food elimination diet, I would do one of two things. I would eliminate gluten, dairy, and sugar would be the top three that I would eliminate. Um, also a whole 30 diet can be great for people to eliminate, you know, the most common, um, foods that you're intolerant to. But if you really want to get, you know, to, to not go through that process and guess, then you get tested because that, that is more of a customized approach for you and your body and, and what's going on within your body. Wonderful. Julie. Where can people find you? Where can they work with you if they are having any gut issues and they want to look for a specialist? What's the best way to contact you? Yeah, sure. So I am on Facebook and Instagram and my um, my handle is just Julie Davy NP. Um, I also have a website and it's just juliedavy.com. It's D-A-V-E-Y.com. Uh, and um, there's information on there um, around how you can you know, reach out to me. I do discovery calls. So I'd be happy to um, have a chat with you, um, you know, to see what's going on and, and if I'm able to help you. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to connect. And the website was juliedavy.com. 
Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much for everything. This has been amazing. And thank you for answering all the questions and all of the wonderful explanations. And for the audience, thank you so much for connecting. And we will see you guys next time. Thank bye you bye. for having me. It was so fun. Thank you, Julie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.